Hey guys, welcome back to my new video and today we'll be talking about XXE injection. Also, if my voice sounds a little different, please ignore it because I have a cold and my throat is a bit sore, but it's been a while. I created another video, so I had to. Anyways, so in this video, we'll talk about what is XXE injection, that is XML, external entity, and how they are caused and how you can look for it while bug hunting and what are the bugs and we're gonna look at some reports as well so it make much more sense to you let's hop into it xxe is a vulnerability that occurs when an application parses xml input insecurely and it allows an attacker to inject xxe entities into the xml which can cause weird behaviors and we're gonna look at what are those weird behaviors but if you don't know what xml entity is what's the structure of xml some basic stuff i can give you a heads up real quick this will really make sense to you i made a little something to show you guys so i created this uh, whole diagram so it took me a little while but hope you like it anyway so we have this uh, xml payload and let's understand what it is so first we have this doc type foo so first we have this document type definition and this is like uh, the default format for it for example an html you type html body and head stuff like that similar to that you have that doc type and inside the doc type which is document type definition we have this uh, name so name of the document type definition is uh, foo and then we have the square brackets inside the square brackets you define different elements references and other stuff so first you have this element you're defining an element name foo in there and then we have this entity entity is like a variable for example in other programming languages you must have seen like you provide a variable and then you assign a value to it similar to that you have this entity and the name of the entity is xxe of course it can be any name and then you are defining a value which is file colon slash 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 etc slash password and we all know what is that this is the file or the path where the passwords are stored for users in a linux machine so well, this is the value now after that you can see there is a foo open and closed and inside the foo uh, element we have this query and then we have this referencing syntax of xxe so you have to provide the variable here this is a variable so you basically you are referencing that variable again and this variable will be replaced by the content of the path of etc slash password basically you're trying to fetch that content over there and this is the whole game of xxc injection because you are trying to add your own entity your own custom entity which is doing anything you can provide any path here not just etc password so basically a custom entity should be restricted but if you're able to do that you can fetch any file and that is why it is called xxc injection because you're injecting xml content like entities and stuff here okay so i hope this makes sense to you now and now we can move on to some hacker one report so you can understand this much better and what are the bugs that you can try while you're looking at the applications while you are hunting for this vulnerabilities and how you can look for xxc injection while you are hunting for these bugs specifically in application that is using xml for sending data to the server here we have the first HackerOne report and this is reported to US Department of Defense. It says XML external entity injection vulnerability occur when an application parses XML input that contains reference to an external entity. As I said, an external entity means an entity that is custom or user defined. So when the XML parser is improperly configured to process external entities it can allow attacker to read arbitrary files on the server perform server-side request forgery conduct denial of service attacks and even execute remote code but this is a bit rare case so let's look at this http request i, th I think my fingers are tripping on the mouse right now i'm feeling like i'm having fever again anyways 
so we have this uh, post request here the path slash ca slash rest slash uh, search request and as you can see this is taking xml the content type is xml if you see there is a different content type like application like application json in that case you can also try changing the content type to xml and see if the application is accepting xml data for that there is an extension in burp suite i think it's called convert something like this i forgot the name but if i remember it i'll put it in the description so do check it out but yeah you can definitely try that so so we have this xml syntax over here xml version 2.0 and then the doc type dtd and then replace and then we have this uh, custom entity this time we have the name of the entity as ent last time we had xse so keep that in mind and then we have the value etc slash password so basically trying to read data from this particular path and then we have some different elements and then we can see the difference of that entity file inside the profile id element so this entity or ent variable will be replaced by the contents of the etc slash password file and it will be displayed to user in the response i wonder if he added any response um yeah he did so this is how the response will look like as you can see it contains data over here which is really sensitive and you can see the severity of this vulnerability is high so this is really nice thing you cannot see the bounty but you can figure out what would be in case of in cases like this where you can literally read any file on the system so now we just saw the live example of it so moving on to the second report that is reported to informatica and this is a bit complex report but i think this is really worth looking into because it's a pretty different scenario and how you can exploit xxe in different cases okay so here we have this endpoint it's a post endpoint and we have this api rest and the rest of the stuff query and then as you can see and then we have this um, values but interesting thing to be note here that the content type is application json and he said that we could change the content type to application xml and convert json to xml so he converted the content type from json to xml as i told you before you can do that and sometimes the application does accept a different content type so this is really worth looking into I just realized what's the name of that verb suite extension. I think it is content type converter. You can look into it. It's free to install. Okay, so now this is the converted part and you can see this is converted and we have this uh, entity here. Again, this is a custom defined entity and it has a value to read the value of etc slash password. I think he meant to write password but anyways you got a response like this no such file or directory basically i think you tried to find a path but you got an error like this okay no such file or directory so most people think okay this is probably not vulnerable but this guy did something interesting he tried to get the etc password with oob vector so what he's trying to do is like a normal case scenario you inject the entity and the server gives you the response like the data of that particular file in the response directly right like in the previous report we saw but most of the time that's not going to happen there is some kind of protection or security in the back end and you won't get that in the response in that case you can use oob vector in which you can get the response in your controlled server instead of directly in the response so you're making the server to send the response back to a different server that is controlled by you so why this happens so basically xml does allow fetching external resources like uh, files and stuff but you can abuse this functionality by telling it to fetch um file but that is going to be an internal file and sending it to your control server 
okay so as we can see here in the entity he created an entity named asd and added the oob url access.html so that didn't work and he decided to use the oob vector now how he did that first we have this post request again and inside we have this xml data now this is a bit different as you can see there are two entities now first entity is defined with p variable and second entity is defined with asd and the first entity contains again that path to etc password and the second one we have a different value that is a url so basically access.html is the ddd file that the attacker is trying to fetch we know what ddd files are right ddd files are basically files that contains xml data and that xml data can have their own entities and variables and stuff okay so now basically you control a server where you host your own file okay we have a comment here what does your access.html look like so it contains only this one line that's all it contains and you can see we have this another entity and the entity name is person c basically c that person is just a syntax and then again inside entity we have another custom entity that is with the name rrr and then it contains value ftp colon slash slash evil host slash person b now this might be sounding a little confusing, but if you notice in the end, again, we have this person C, so it's getting referenced here. Now, if you're a little confused, what is the difference between that ampersand you saw before and this person? Because we were looking at ampersand and we saw that, okay, that's like a variable. Actually, they both are same. They both are doing the same thing. The difference is where you are referencing them. If you're using ampersand with a particular name, you're referencing it in the XML body. But if you're using percent, then you are referencing it in the DDD body. So yeah, they both have variables. Now, we can see that there are a lot of variables. The first thing keep in mind that we have this file access.html and then inside the xx.html we have this particular line now this line is doing multiple things but over here percent c defines percent rrr basically a variable contains another variable and whatever this variable is going to have as a value means person c will also going to have it as a value right okay so here's the trick as you can see, person C is defined here, and person C contains another entity that is person RRR. Basically, one variable contains another variable, and that variable has its own value, which is basically it's trying to fetch this path. It is FTP colon slash slash evil host slash person B. And now you must be thinking, okay, where is person B? Person B is actually over here. In the request and person b contains value etc password so basically person b is going to contain the values the data that we actually want to fetch that is the file contents of etc slash password file now and that is going to be fetched by a different file that is access not html so over here person rrr or basically rrr will be replaced by the contents of the etc slash password file and once it is replaced by it person c is going to contain that value because person c is basically containing the value of rrr so there is one variable c and it contains the value of another variable that is rrr so whatever this variable is going to have c variable is also going to have that and now in the end c variable contains the content of the edc slash password file so this is really crazy now once it fetches all that it will be referenced over here let me go down yeah as you can see we have this person asd so asd is the entity here that contains the value that was retrieved after all the processing that happened in this one so person ASD is basically telling the XML parser to load this file as this is the value of ASD, right? So once this is loaded here, 
we know that inside this file we have something called person rrr and we know that person rrr contains the value of the etc slash password file so this is how they all are referencing each other to fetch the actual content of the etc password file this is really crazy and Maybe it might not be making a little much sense to you, but if you want, you can just go back to the video and just watch it again, this section. I'm sure it will make sense to you. I'll definitely provide the link in the description of this report as well. So this is a way around to fetch a file if you cannot do this directly. Mm, he got a swag and a bounty, it seems. Okay, that's really nice. So that's it for this video guys, if you want to learn more about XXE injection, you can definitely go around and solve XXE post trigger labs, they're really amazing, you can learn some blogs or you can just watch my video and ask questions in my discord server, I would love to respond on that. So that's it for today, I don't think I have more energy to speak now, so hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.